What's up guys, thanks so much for tuning into the channel today. I'm Timothy and I'm so excited that we have hit over 200 subscribers. I think last time I checked we were at 212 subscribers and that is awesome because I just did a video, my last video was talking about returning the LG V20 and we had just hit 100 subscribers. So we've already doubled our subscriber list in just one week and that is so awesome. Thank you guys for the love and the support. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm trying really hard to put out some cool content for you guys and I hope that you were like it. And so thanks for thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being a part of the community from this very initial get go. Um, and and keep keep coming back. Keep liking the videos. Keep watching because I've got a lot in store for you. Just a quick summary of what's coming. Uh, I talked with B H Photo today and uh, my Panasonic Lumix G80 or G85, depending on where you are. It's shipped. It's on its way which is so excited. I've been waiting for that. I'm running right now on the Nikon D5300, which has been my camera for a long time, uh, doing a lot of photography stuff, but I'm using it for more, more for video now. And it's, it's focusing issues are, are starting to be a little bit of a pain as far as autofocus goes and running things from a one man show. So I'm really looking forward to getting the Panasonic and shooting in 4k and getting nice and crispy footage for you guys that's super exciting and then i also have the dji phantom pro coming i talked with dji today as well they updated me said i'm on the next shipment that's going to be coming into their warehouse as soon as they get their next shipment of orders mine's in that batch and so it should be coming very soon hopefully within the next week or so um, and for those that are on the channel because you saw my video from 3dr Thanks for subscribing and be sure and just keep an eye out for that video. I'm going to do a full series on both the Panasonic camera and the DJI Mavic Pro. Um, all of the features of those products and just do a whole big review of them. And so stick around and if you're new, just hit that subscribe button because we've got a lot of cool stuff coming your way. So today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the new MacBook Pro. A little background for me, like I'm a huge Apple uh, you could call me a fanboy. I mean, I've used Apple products forever. I started in college um, with a Dell laptop and after it died out after one year, um, I switched to that white MacBook and I haven't been back since. I went to the MacBook Pro after that um, and then now I'm still running on my third MacBook, which is my MacBook Pro 15 inch uh, Retina from 2012. Um, I've got We've had iPhone since the iPhone 4. I just recently switched to the new, uh, not the new, but the S7 Edge, Samsung S7 Edge, uh, which I'm liking coming from a iPhone user. I went to the Note 7 and I've been talking about that some and I'm gonna have some, some cool videos about this phone coming up soon. Although it's sort of an older phone now, um, a lot of people have been covering this phone for a long time, but I still really like it and it gets better coverage for me at my house here than my iPhone does. But anyway, that's another story. Um, so, I mean, I'm a huge Apple user. Just look at my desk right here. We've got the MacBook Pro Retina, which I talked about, the Thunderbolt display, um, an iPad uh, 4. I mean, it's just, and this is not like, oh, he's got all this Apple stuff. I mean, I've acquired it over a long period of time um, and, you know, sell, a lot of it is because I sell my current Apple product right as the new one's released so that I can get the most value out of it and upgrade at the lowest cost. Um, and so that's always been sort of my, my theory. That's kind of my theory about a lot of things. My whole family has iPhones. My wife has a MacBook Air. She's got an iPad. So, okay, all that to say, we're really into the Apple ecosystem. Before I get a lot of hate from people saying that PC is the way to go, why would you spend so much money, blah, 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 blah. That's great if it works for you. I'm all about it. I don't condone PC users. I was one for a long time. There's stuff you can do on it that you can't do anywhere else, and that's great. I don't have a problem with it. For me, I use my Mac for professional reasons. I'm not just the average person at Starbucks looking for a status statement. I use my MacBook for um, all kinds of things. My wife and I do a lot of music. We're worship leaders, and so we travel around, and I use this as the core of everything that runs all of our tracks, that runs... Uh, all kinds of audio editing software. I ran a recording studio for a while and it was at the heart of it all. Now I'm doing a lot more video work, stuff like this for YouTube, also stuff for other organizations, and I'm doing a lot of video stuff in Adobe Premiere. And I need to be able to process that footage, render out stuff that's of high quality. Right now my MacBook is doing just fine. I've got a fully spec'd out MacBook uh, Retina 15 inch. It's got the 2.6 gigahertz Intel i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 solid state drive. It was maxed at the time of release. Um, 
and it still is working really, really well. It cranks out stuff uh, just fine, but when it gets into 4K footage, it starts to chug a little bit more. When you're buying a computer, you wanna be able to make it last for four to five years at least to future-proof things for technology. And this MacBook I have, I got back in 2012. And so I'm at that point, I'm at that four to five year range and the, the changes on the MacBook Pro have been drastic. Um, and so I just wanted to cover a few of them, talk about them, maybe get some feedback from you guys in the comments as you guys have been so awesome about commenting down in the videos. I love that, I love to have discussion and I really do try to get to every single one of them so if you if you leave a comment below if you have a question or if you just want to talk about something please please type it out below and every day i get into those comments and try to respond and, and have conversations so i love that please do please continue to do that so i've got the uh, apple website pulled up i want to talk through a few of the things that's going on with it um, you know the features probably by now or you wouldn't be here but I'll go through them really quick and talk about a few of the things that I think are good, a few of the things that I think are you know neither here nor there. The first thing, uh, obviously the big touch ID bar, I'm just gonna get this out of the way. I don't really, I'm, it looks cool, I'm not super impressed by it. I'm not, I haven't used it yet. Maybe it's one of those situations where once you start using it, you'll start to see how useful it is. But I use hotkeys like crazy and so for me taking my hand off the keyboard for hotkeys and moving it up to the touch panel bar, probably not something I'll do. I do like the option that you can uh, you know, customize function buttons and stuff like that. But you know, a lot of the things that I saw, I just, I mean, navigating little tabs in Safari with that, I just, I don't know that I see that that's useful. The touch ID is cool. I do use a ton to be able to have those on my other devices, just being able to push the, the touch ID button, having that on my Mac. That's really cool. But other than that, I think those features are neat, but they're not the selling points for me. The selling point is what's under the hood. Like I said, I've got a fully specced out uh, MacBook Pro Retina from 2012. So the difference between that and what is coming is significant. Um, the, the new processor that you can get with, I'm gonna talk about the 15 inch model, by the way, uh, in space gray, which super excited about. I wish there was a black version. Come on, Apple, give us another black, all black computer, that'd be great. The Space Gray, um, I'm gonna go off of those specs, not the 13 inch model. So uh, you can get the 2.9 gigahertz quad core Intel i7 processor um, with Turbo Boost up to 3.8 gigahertz. That's great. I mean, that's more processing power than a lot of desktops had a few years ago. So that's really, really awesome that we're getting that kind of processor. I have a 2.6 uh, i7 processor already, but this is the quad core uh, 2.9, so that's great. Um, 16 gigs of RAM. I wish that we could have had the 32 gigs of RAM, but I understand why we don't. If you don't understand that, um, just a quick synopsis is, you know, 32 gigs of RAM would be amazing. I've used those in some iMacs before. Just phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. Um, but it it takes up a lot of battery power. And so you sacrifice battery power, plus in order to get 32 gig RAM right now to work with the Intel processors, you have to use desktop RAM, which is, you know, it's gonna be, th your, your whole computer's gotta be thicker. They don't make RAM right now in 32 gig form that works with the current Intel processors. That's my understanding of it. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. But, um, so it's, it's pretty much impossible unless you sacrifice, uh, you know, a larger, a larger thickness in your MacBook, as well as shorter battery life. And so what does Apple do with anything they update? They make it thinner, they make it faster, and they make it last longer. And so that's their, their big three things always, no matter what kind of device it is, iPad, iPhone, Macs. And so they're not gonna compromise on those in order to give a small percentage of us users the 32 gig of RAM that we think we need, which I still think I need it. I still think that's something that would be huge, especially for people that use these devices on a professional day-to-day uh, -day in and out usage. Anyway, moving on, we got 16 gigs of RAM. We have solid state hard drives. I've got a 512 solid state hard drive, but they've changed the solid state hard drive technology now so that it's almost twice as fast as what I have now. Now, if, you were, if you've not used solid state before, you gotta get on board. I mean, swap it out from what you've got. Get on to, you know, OWC or MaxSales.com and swap out your hard drive because that transforms your computer. And so to have a solid state drive already is super fast, super quick, it's great. To double the speed that it's already at is like, that's great, that's phenomenal. And so to have that, to have it optioned in 512, one terabyte or two terabyte is fantastic as well. Although in order to get the two terabyte version, 
you have got to add another 800 bucks onto your order. That is a huge slap in the face. If you wanna really future-proof your device, you get the two terabytes, because right now I'm running at 512, and I'm running out of room, and I can't really even use the, um, you know, the 4K footage editing and stuff like that, because I wanna put that on my internal hard drive when I edit to make it go smoother, and then export it out and store it all on an external drive. But with the 512, I'm starting to you know, get a little bit uh, small on my space. And so the one terabyte, you think about it four to five years from now is also going to be kind of small. For me, I could, I couldn't pull the trigger on two terabytes. That's just too much money. The next thing is graphics. You get the new Radeon Pro and you can go up to the 460 with four gigs of RAM. Um, you need to do this. If you're looking at, at these computers, you got to upgrade the graphics. Okay. You don't do this to make this a gaming machine. You know, choosing this extra 460 with four gigs of RAM does not mean you can suddenly launch your favorite game and play it crispy on every single highest setting that's that's not what these that's not what it's about this is going to allow you to do some things significantly better and overall to make your machine run smoother and so there are things now that you have to realize that graphic processors do besides just games they help out with the actual cpu in the in the computer and so that's huge just to make things flow better and also if you're using stuff like me like adobe premiere adobe photoshop those graphics cards do help things in render times and such so with all of that um we're looking at 34.99 which is uh insane and then if you want to go up to the two terabyte hard drive you're looking at 42.99 um, a lot of people can buy a used car for that amount of money. I mean, this is a ton of money. And so for me, um, what I have to do and what I have to do every time I update Apple products is sell what I currently have to fund the next upgrade. The thing that I'm really struggling with is, you know, do I wait and upgrade later um, when this pricing comes down? The problem with that becomes the current device that I have, the 2012 version of the MacBook Pro, decreases in value. Literally every day now it's going to drop in value because of its predecessors that have released. In the end, it costs more money to upgrade. The other thing to consider is the USB-C ports. We get four of them. We don't have an SD card slot anymore. Um, that's kind of a big deal. It's been brought up a lot by YouTubers not having an SD card slot. And I understand that, um, but also most cameras, even older ones like this Nikon that I'm shooting on, they all have wireless technology. And so you can transfer stuff wirelessly. Now that's not always as fast as the SD card slot, sometimes not as convenient, and I get that. I do understand you know, giving that up in order to make it smaller um, and to push technology forward. I wish there was an SD card slot. I'm gonna have to carry a dongle now, but um, we're pretty much moving into a place right now in technology where Apple is pushing the envelope. And I think they're pushing it a little bit too hard, getting rid of the headphone jack on the iPhone. That's why I switched to a Note. I mean, that's why I left uh, and didn't upgrade to the new iPhone 7. Because for me, I'm a professional musician. I have tons of, of money in, in headphones. I've got, you know, custom molded headphones that I use all the time. And I'm not ready to throw out that because that's going to be around for a long time. Um, I'm not, you know, going to just carry around a little headphone dongle for that. So yeah, we still get the headphone port on the Mac. That's a good thing. Everything else is going to have to have some sort of dongle or dock for USB-C. I do think that technology is heading in that direction so that USB-C is all the things that we're gonna have is gonna be that. You look at all of the new Android phones, they're all in USB-C charging ports now. The data transfers, the charging speeds, all of that is much better. So where we're going, yes, it's gonna be great. Um, are we there yet? No, that means we're gonna spend a lot of money on dongles. And here's the part that kept me from buying the MacBook Pro a few days ago. I had it all in my cart, I was ready to pull the trigger. Um, side note, I have a friend at Apple who's super awesome, who's giving me uh, a discount. And so that's the only way I would even consider spending this much because I'm not spending that much. Um, I'm about to pull the trigger, I've got it all in my cart. I'm adding in my, you know, my VGA, my DVI, my HDMI adapters now to USB-C. And I look for my FireWire adapter because Again, professional uh, musician and, and audio guy, I've got an audio interface. I have two Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40s, and those are ran via a Thunderbolt cable. 
And so I went in there to check for it and there's not one on the Apple store. I started to look across Google and I haven't yet to be able to find a USB-C or Thunderbolt 3 to Firewire cable. That's a problem, not even a cable, not an adapter. That's huge for me because these things are the core of my whole audio production unit. They run the studio, they run the stage, they run everything. To get rid of them is suddenly, you know, they're five, $600. And so I'd have to go to one that's USB powered, which Focusrite does have in the Scarlet. But that's, that's another purchase. That's another selling of something I have in order to upgrade. And that's huge because I can't I can't be without those interfaces even for a week because I use them all the time. Then I'm looking at this. This is my current desk setup. I've got my MacBook Pro setting up here, but this here is the Apple Thunderbolt display. It's a 27 inch um, LED display from Apple. I've had it for uh, a while now. I absolutely love it. It's a great display, but it's a Thunderbolt display. So it's not gonna be uh, as compatible with the new one. I'm gonna have to get another dongle, a USB-C Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter in order to use my display. So now I'm thinking, all right, LG's got these displays out that are 4K, that are ultra ride, that look great, that have USB-C on them, so I can do one cable to charge and everything. Because now in order to charge this, uh, this Thunderbolt display, I have to have another adapter. <sighs> It just gets really, really crazy. So now the snowball effect is happening. I've got to sell the Thunderbolt display so that I can get the LG display that has the USB-C. I've got to sell both of my interfaces in order to get another interface that has USB powered on it. I've got to buy a dongle for an SD card. And so this price that was already daunting is becoming a huge issue that costs thousands and thousands of dollars to be able to do an upgrade. An upgrade that I do think is going to be necessary in the coming years, but I'm not sure that it's necessary right now. And that's where I'm on the fence. And that's where I need some help from you guys. I want you guys to tell me in the comments below, what are you doing? Obviously we've got some PC guys and that's fine. Like I said earlier, that's awesome. I don't hate on you at all. That's great. You use it, you do you. I'm committed to the Apple platform because it always works for me. And it's got all of these, these professional software that I use all the time on it. I'm too invested in this to, to get away from it, okay? I mean, it, I'm, I do some complex programming with MIDI and all that stuff. Anyway, however, is now the time to upgrade or do you wait? Um, I'm not really sure, I'm on the fence and I'm usually one to just be like, all right, let's go, let's pull the trigger, let's get as much as we can out of my current device so I can buy the next one. Um, and I'm sort of on the fence, I'm not entirely sold and so, I don't know, I could use some help. What do you guys think I should do? Should I pull the trigger and get the, the better upgrades? Is it worth it to you? What are you doing? That's what I really wanna hear. What are you guys doing? Are you upgrading your current MacBooks? Are you coming into MacBooks for the first time? Um, what do you use them for? All that stuff. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys think about the new Apple update to the MacBook Pro line and what you're going to do about it. Thanks for watching again today, guys. My name's Timothy. It's been great having you. If you're not a part of the channel, please hit the subscribe button as we've just hit 200. That's awesome. I want to keep growing this. I'm going to keep doing more and more videos. Be sure to stick around, hit the like button, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.